So there's been a lot of changes in the medical school community, and I figured it's about time to talk about them. There's step two changes, is there step one changes? So let's just bring everything together here. Uh, before we get started, my name is Prerak Juthani. I am an MD MBA candidate here at Yale. I'm interested in medicine, entrepreneurship, pretty much all things uh, health tech. And today we're going to be talking about particularly the USMLE Step 2 CS cancellation. That is the first order of business that I wanted to talk about. This was just announced yesterday by the NBME, and they said that they would cancel the USMLE Step 2 clinical skills exam. This is one of three exams that was required if you wanted to become a um, you know, board certified physician uh, within the United States. And it's actually a pretty big step to completely cancel it. And it impacts all medical students, including myself, because I had not taken this yet. And now I will not have to because now it's completely canceled. But for anyone who does not know what the step two CS exam is, it was started in the 1970s, and by the end of 2001, it actually had become mandatory for anyone who wanted to do residency in the United States. It costs about $1,000, and it needed to be taken at one of five testing locations around the U.S. It wasn't something that you could just take at your neighborhood testing center. You actually had to go to five locations, like Philadelphia was one, Los Angeles was another, and so there were only five locations around the United States. And so if you were an international medical graduate, you actually had to come into one of these five centers, which would actually inflate the price of this test. Um, about 95% of US individuals passed, while 77% of international medical graduates would pass on their first try. So it was a difficult test, but not impossible. It was either pass fail, it was a binary test. Unlike step one and unlike step two CK right now, which are graded on a scale from like zero to 300, step two CS was a binary pass fail exam. The overall flow of the exam was that you'd get there at 8 a.m., you'd have an orientation that would tell you what to do, and starting around 9 a.m., you would actually have about 12 patient encounters. These are fake patients, but they pretty much act like real patients. They'll say, oh, I have pain in my right quadrant, or oh my god, I have neck pain, or oh my god, uh, my arm feels weird, something like that. And then you, as the doctor, would have a set amount of time to investigate figure out what you think is going on, and at the end of each patient encounter, you would have 15 minutes to write down your notes, what tests you wanna order next, what you think is going on, what you think the differential diagnosis is. The total length of the test was about six hours, and until recently, this test was primarily to see if you could speak English and, and communicate effectively, as you could tell, because 95% um, of US individuals passed and 77% of international medical graduates passed. Was this test as important as people made it out to be? Well, for one, one of the bad parts about this test was that it was $1,000. But because it's canceled now, that is actually a huge relief. But I do want to point out that program directors did actually take this test into account for residency. So you can see here, this actually tells you the um, different types of program directors and what they consider important in terms of interviewing applicants. They interviewed about 650 uh, program directors and they asked them what they think is important. And you'll see here that passing the USMLE Step 2 CS was important to about 60% with an average rate of four out of five importance. So passing this exam was actually quite important for program directors because it showed them that you were competent in front of patients. However, now that that is gone, it actually is changing up the game quite a bit, but in my personal opinion, it's actually a huge, huge positive, primarily because this test was just a lot of money and actually was not that, like, I think the reason it was instituted early on was because uh, medical students would go into residency without knowing how to talk to patients. But I think today's medical education, at least personally speaking, I feel like I've gotten so much exposure in front of patients that this test was just an additional hurdle. Like, I didn't feel like I was proving anything. If anything, I almost feel like I have to put on an act because I do know how to talk to patients. I just feel like this test would make it a lot more complicated uh, than I learned in medical school. So now you may be wondering, what implications does this have on you as a medical student? Well, first of all, right now, not. If you have not taken step two CS, you no longer will have to because they're not offering the test. But I do think that the Things that were tested on step 2 CS will now show up in other ways. They've actually even mentioned this in the announcements if you read it closely, but they don't mention explicitly how. One of the ways that they're going to do it is if you've taken step 1 or step 2 CK, I've taken both, there are actually different components on those tests where you actually like do a virtual like hover over someone's like chest and hear their heart sounds. Uh, so there's basically audio examples in step 1 and step 2 that kind of test your clinical reasoning. And so one way that they could um, kind of 
disseminate the step 2 CS information is by including a lot more content like that on step 1 and step 2 CK. That is a possibility. However, that they haven't explicitly mentioned what they're going to do. The other negative part of this is that the complex level 2, which is needed for DO students, if you are going to get a DO degree, you need to take the complex level 2, which is very analogous to step 2 CS. That is still in place. So that is actually another negative and implications in terms of making the disparity a bit more stark because now DO students have to go through quite a bit more. And it's unfortunate because this exam is also $1,295, and I am not a fan of the like price of these, these exams. It's ridiculous. Um, the other implications that this could have is, again, it could increase the importance of the USMLE Step 2 CK, which is way more clinically relevant and will become way, 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 way more uh, relevant, especially after Step 1 goes past fail, which I'm going to talk about next. As I also mentioned, Step 1 also includes some clinical reasoning, but it's a lot more about basic science. But one way that they could actually, uh, you know, account for the lack of step two CS is by increasing the clinical relevance in step one. Again, they have not mentioned explicitly what they're going to do, but these are just some of the ways that I think they could approach this based on their announcement. With that being said, we still have one more thing to talk about today, which is the fact that step one is going to go to pass fail. We, that was mentioned much earlier this year, but they didn't explicitly tell us when that was going to happen. I believe it's in early 2022. And if you read this announcement, it seems like they are going to implement the change. You'll see right here, it says that it's on track to be implemented in January 2022. So if you're taking step one after that date, it's probably going to be pass fail, much like the prior step two CS was. And again, I think this is going to have uh, like quite a few implications, right? When step one goes to pass fail, the biggest thing I see is, again, let's go back to what program directors think is important. And again, you'll see on the left-hand side the thing and the right-hand side the approval reading. 90% of program directors were looking at your step one score. Now, if this becomes pass-fail, it doesn't become as important. I'm sure it's very important to make sure you still pass. But now guess what? Step two CK is my hypothesis is going to pretty much upshoot right there. So just purely based on this data, my hypothesis is that step 2CK is just going to skyrocket in importance. And because of that, don't worry, I got you. I'll be pumping out a whole lot of additional material for step 2CK. But step 2CK will, I think, definitely skyrocket in importance. But another thing that they also could do is make step 1 a lot more difficult in terms of passing. Uh, I know that in the past when you have pass-fail exams, majority of the people pass, like maybe 90 plus percent. But I can see them making a step one exam where maybe like 75% pass. So again, these are this is all conjecture. I by no means know entirely what's going on. I'm just giving you my two cents and hopefully educating you on how you should kind of be proceeding these exams. Again, I don't think these exams define anyone. I've met phenomenal people who just are not good at exam taking, but are phenomenal clinicians, including myself. Uh, but there's also, uh, these exams can only test so much, right? So this was intended to inform. I hope you guys enjoyed it. With that being said, drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching.